um, we had a business call from the restaurant of the TV that um, they cannot speak because the flood has rendered them. To my right is St. John's Anglican Church. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I am the very Reverend Dr. Ifejuku Bema, the vicar of St. John's Anglican Church and the provost of the Anglican Diocese of Medugri. We are here in Medugri uh, and we experienced a very serious flood uh, two weeks ago. I'm able to stand in the church now. When the flood came, you look well, it got as high as this. And that means that everything in the church swallowed, drowned, soaked, and destroyed. All the gadgets, equipment, books, vestments, anything that is really worth it in the church has been destroyed. The only thing that survived are wooden pews those are the only things that survived. And the water came down to here. You will see the first color, you see the next, and you see the next. Then down to here, you can see the max where it stayed for a day or two, for the three weeks it took until it has gone down. Even the flowers that are drowned, you can see they have all dried up because of uh, the water covering them for a long time or maybe because of chemicals in the water. At the time when this water was here, there were crocodiles in this church compound. I just came in from the zoo on the other side of the road and everybody had to run away because you don't know how many cro crocodiles, at least we sighted three of them and one chased one person out. But and these are things we've gone to. So everything in the church, all our equipment, all our documents, all our vestments, uh, only our wooden furniture uh, survived this onslaught. Uh, everything has been turned into a heap of mud and rubble. And in the vicarage, the water also got this high too and that means everything in the vicarage all property anything that belonged to anybody in the vicarage that about about this height they were all destroyed and the water stayed for almost two weeks before it could clear and because of the crocodiles we couldn't even dare to come in to do anything and one of us that was trying to do some video the next day after the flood he introduced the video and wanted to go in to come and do the second part that will show everything while the water was there only to discover that the compound has been taken over by crocodiles so he couldn't continue he only did part one of that video and nobody had any courage to come in to the church until we are sure we can see, you know, where any crocodile is or not, where any python is or not. And these are things that happen. The greater thing is that what happened to the church happened to the homes of almost, in fact, the church is even on a higher ground compared to the house of most of our members and their shops in the place where the market area, the Amadubelo area, the Bank of the North, those that know Medugri, uh, this is where many of our members live, this is where their houses were, this is how their shops were. So everything in the house, everything in the up till now, they've not been able to go back to their houses. They've managed to come back to their shops and see whether people can buy anything, especially if it's metal, 
that can survive water or things like that. So they are still trying to see what they can do with their wares. But to enter the house, some houses still have water as we speak. A couple of days or four days ago, a crocodile was found to have been trapped in one of the houses there. So this is how devastating. So nobody, people don't have house, they don't have wares, they don't have shops, and we are all like that. Finally, it's important to understand the state of the mind of people in Medugri. For 15 years or more, we have experienced bashing of bombing, displacement from, we've lost up to 20 churches, 20 parishes, I am. members scattered, members dead. We don't even know who is dead. We don't know who is alive. The only ones we have alive, they are IDPs, and they are living with us in the church compound. The parents, one parent is dead, the other one is alive, and things like that. So we are under stress. And now this has come upon us again with bomb explosion upon bomb explosion, insurgency attack, killing upon killing, fire upon fire. And as people are trying to recover, this has come. So people are depleted, people are depressed, people are exhausted, and people just don't know what to do. And because news is no longer here, the journalists have gotten tired, they've left the place and gone. So everybody doesn't even know what we are going through anymore. And so we are just on our own struggling to keep the fort, but it's difficult. All these IDPs, you have to look after them and you can't even look after yourself. So everybody is feeding hands to mouth. So it's a very distressing, very depressing event. But we have confidence that God will do something. God will stretch out his finger and do a thing. The church of God will march on. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. What happened to the church in North Africa will not happen to the church in Northern Nigeria. That's why some of us are still here to tell the devil that, look, whatever happens, we will stand for God. So we believe that we will get over this as our brethren join us in prayers. And whatever help anybody can render will be highly appreciated. God will bless every one of you and we are grateful that you are listening to us and you are asking us to let you know what is happening. The Lord will not forget your good works, not forget your love and labor of love in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.